My name is Lindsay Glenn and I'm the Publications Director of Knit and Crochet for Leisure Arts. And I'm Sarah Green and I am a Knit and Crochet Editor for Leisure Arts. Today we're going to teach you how to nook, but first you're probably wondering what is this nook? If you figured out that it's not an e-reader then you're probably on the right track. A nook is a specialized crochet hook that has a cord threaded through the non-hook end. The cord holds your stitches while you work, allowing you to create a knitted fabric. It's knitting with a crochet hook. By the end of the video today, you will have learned how to create two knitted fabrics, garter stitch and stockinette stitch. You'll need a nook, a cord, and a skein of your favorite worsted weight or medium weight yarn. You may see a number four on the yarn label. Now we'll get you started with showing you how to prep the knit cord. Thread approximately 8 inches or 20.5 centimeters of cord through the end of the nook. This will be the short end of your cord. The nook can be held two ways, as you would hold a pencil or as you would hold a table knife. I suggest holding the nook in a way that is most comfortable for you. Now grab your favorite yarn and Lindsay will get you started. Not. Pull a length of yarn from the skein and make a circle approximately 8 inches or 20.5 centimeters from the end, like you see here. The yarn on the skein side of the circle is the working yarn. The opposite end is the yarn tail. Now you'll slip the nook under the yarn in the center of the circle and pull both ends to tighten, like so. The next step is to chain the number of stitches required for your project or the foundation chain. Today we'll make a swatch with 10 stitches. So we'll need 10 chains on our foundation chain. To make a chain, start with the nook in your dominant hand like this. Loop the working yarn over your fingers of your other hand and grasp it in your palm. This helps control the tension of your yarn as you work. Grasp the slip knot in the same hand. Wrap the yarn around the nook from back to front. Turn the nook and catch the yarn and draw it through the slip knot. Each time you wrap the yarn and draw it through, you make one chain. Now we have 10 chains on our foundation chain, and Sarah will get us started by showing us how to pick up stitches. If you already know how to crochet, you will want to pay close attention to this because we're not using a typical crochet yarn over. The next step is to pick up the stitches on the foundation chain. The loop on your nook counts as the first stitch. To pick up a stitch, Insert the nook from front to back into the second chain from the nook. With the nook facing down, catch the yarn and pull it through the chain. Insert your nook into the next chain, catch the yarn and pull it through. Do this in each stitch across the foundation chain. Once you get to the end, count to make sure that you have 10 stitches on the nook. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then slide the stitches off the nook and onto the cord. Let the short end of the cord hang freely, like that. Now turn your piece around so that the yarn is closest to the nook. Hold the nook in your dominant hand and your piece in your other hand. Then wrap the yarn around your index finger and hold it in your palm like this. Now let's get started with the knit stitch. 
Make sure your yarn is at the back of your piece. Insert the nook from left to right into the first stitch. You can insert the nook above or below the cord. It doesn't matter. Again, with the nook facing down, catch the yarn and pull it through the stitch. Just like you were picking up a stitch. This forms a knit stitch on the nook. Keeping the yarn to the back of your piece, continue inserting the nook, catching the yarn, and pulling it through for each stitch. Once you get to the end of the row, be sure to count your stitches to make sure that there are 10 knit stitches on the nook. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. When you get to the end of the row, you're going to gently pull the cord out of the row below, then slide your stitches onto the cord again, letting the short end hang free as before to start your next row. If you continue to knit every stitch on every row, you'll end up with a swatch that looks like this. This knitted fabric is called garter stitch and it's great for all kinds of projects because it's reversible, it's stretchy, and it has a clean finished edge. Now we'll show you how to make the purl stitch, the second basic stitch in knitting. Make sure your yarn is at the front of your piece like this. Insert the nook from right to left into the first stitch. With the nook facing away from you, wrap the yarn from front to back. Then catch the yarn and pull it through the first stitch, forming a purl stitch on the nook. Keeping the yarn to the front of your piece, continue inserting the nook, wrapping and catching the yarn, then pulling it through for each stitch, making a purl stitch on the nook. When you get to the end of the row, be sure to count your stitches to make sure there are 10 purl stitches on the nook. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. By alternating a knit row and a purl row, you can make a knitted fabric called the stockinette stitch, as shown here. You may be familiar with this stitch because it is used for all types of garments, like sweaters that have a smooth or right side and a bumpy or wrong side. The stockinette stitch has a nice clean look, but unlike garter stitch, the edges tend to curl. You can make hundreds of beautiful stitch patterns and designs with just the knit stitch and the purl stitch. Binding off is the method used to remove and secure your stitches from the nook cord so they won't unravel. For our swatch, we will bind off our stitches and knit, so knit the first two stitches. Use the nook to pull the second stitch through the first stitch, like this. One stitch should remain on the nook. Knit the next stitch, then pull it through the stitch on the nook. Continue knitting one stitch, then pulling it through the previous stitch on the nook until there are no stitches left on the cord and only one stitch remains on the nook. And 
that's our last one. Then pull the cord out of your piece and cut the yarn, leaving a long end to weave in later. Slip the last stitch off the hook and pull the long end through the stitch and pull the end to tighten. Congratulations! You've learned the basics of nooking and you're ready to start your first project. You can find out more information at www.leisurearts.com. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch you next time.